Pasco the shop dog in his favorite spot in the truck. Lazy dog. So we're doing a new mod, a new bumper for my son's truck. It's coming out pretty good. Started on it yesterday afternoon, so got to piece together all this stuff on the bottom and around the ends. It's a kit. Relentless Fabrication. Out of Sparks, Nevada. Out of Sparks, Nevada. Kit. Getting some of the... All the outside there. TIG welding all the outside. So... We're just getting attacked and then they go over and... TIG weld all this stuff up. Looking pretty good. It's going to be pretty cool. All right, that's what one thing we're doing today, and we're making panels, <laughs> three quarter conduit. I think I've made about thirty of these things. So they keep the deer out from around the fruit trees. So, last one of these today, I think. Okay. Back to work on this. Okay, here is a close-up of the drawing. Um, I, I'll be happy to send this drawing uh, as a PDF to whoever requests it. That's not a problem at all. So, they're, they're, some of these things are dependent on the diameter that you make it. The diameter here so that your cutting edge is on the center line. So this, this dimension here is actually dependent on that and the thickness of the insert. So if I hold that there, so I used a, this is what I used right here. TPGB321 I55 grade interstate carbide insert. No coatings, no chip breaker. It's just flat. It has an 11 degree clearance on it. Oh, put it on here. Hole in the center. I just used, I didn't, you know, it's countersunk, of course, type of hole, but I just used a 440 socket head cap screw you know so in there it has an 11 degree back rake on it worked extremely well in that 1018 extremely well over here I this is the bolt that I used right there the one inch bolt from the shoulder here it's three and a half in uh, three and an eighth inches 12 point. Of course, I whack off all this here. But that's what I used. And that's the specs on it, if anybody wants to look that up. Very expensive bolts. Somewhere around, I think, $100 a bolt. Very expensive. Good stuff. Just so you know, they, on the, these came off of a an S6 Sikorsky S64 Sky Crane helicopter. There's four of these that hold each landing gear, strut, and wheel on the helicopter, and they only can be used once. You put it on, when you take it off, you throw the bolt away. So I'm able to get a few of these here and there, and I just use them to make stuff out of. I don't use them for anything. They're a pretty cool bolt. I don't know if you can read what that it's right there's the uh, it says I don't know if you can read that NAS it says NAS 636A you can look that up on the internet and check them out so that's that's the that's the cutter that's the drawing uh, it worked really well you saw you saw the finish I I use the same 
same uh, insert, the whole, right here, this insert, the whole, uh, all those tool bits, and it is just as sharp as when I put it in. I turned it at 1850, and I was able to take up, with it really not too much problem, uh, 30 thousandths I went in there, you know, moved it in 30 thousandths uh, on a few of those cuts. Most of them I did 20 to 25, but I, I did try it a couple times at 30, and it, it still worked. You just got to go a little slower feed. So we'll make another one. Here's a little close-up detail of the whistle. If anybody was interested, uh, there's a very I got a very small gap. Now that gap is adjustable by this type of this plug, the shaped plug I have here. Uh, this is mounted on a threaded rod inside. This is adjustable for how much volume of air and the way the stud goes in also will adjust the volume of air. So you can adjust the volume by the volume of air. Volume of air. And this is this is just down to a knife edge turned here and tapered and shaped. You can see that. This is just a brass piece of pipe. Solid piece. Silver soldered in. This is this is just a, co a fancy cover nut that's threaded on because if you when you adjust the for the volume of air here and this gap you can get different tones and different volumes it's so loud the dogs don't like it I don't like it either it's very loud it hurts your ears if you blow for any length of time so that's a little Closer detail. This this here is of course this was another piece of brass pipe with a solid piece here that has air holes in it and then silver soldered in. Same with this brass piece of half inch pipe here with silver soldered in to that. So limited resources on a ship, plenty of material, but and you just have a lathe and a drill press, you no milling machine or anything. So that's, that's that's a little detail on that air whistle. Okay, so there's the details on the dovetail cutter that we're going to get going to right now, and some showed you some details on the air and steam whistle and the tool holder rack for the lathe. The tool holder rack, I'm not going to shoot any more video, shoot any video on that. I just I'll just do throw a couple still pictures up for that. It's pretty. Pretty cut and dry, a lot of cutting and grinding and drilling and things like that. Pretty pretty straightforward. But duck cut cutters, pretty fun, pretty easy to make actually. Uh, it should only take a few hours uh, to get it set up. But I, I do want to show one of the features of my DRO uh, with a dovetail cutter. I'll show you that of how I set that up at the right angles on the mill. It's a very very nice feature of the DRO to be able to do that. You don't have to use a sign bar or anything. It, it's very accurate, especially it's plenty accurate for this, but it's very accurate. So we'll show you that. And so let's get going. We'll get over there to the equipment. Starting to get the cut bolt cut down to five six five eight point six two five from a one inch bolt. So got quite a bit of cut to do. Show a little bit of it here.
This is for the dovetail cutter, just as a reminder there. We'll cut this down to 5 8 You know, this, this portion here, the shank. Then we'll put in a collet to turn the rest. Turn it 400 RPM at 6.2 thousandths feed rate. Cutting pretty nice. I think I can go a little faster. It's gonna take a while. Pretty tough stuff. That's a forty thousand total depth of cut there. Chips got stringy. Let's go ahead and do this a little faster. Finish is absolutely perfect. A little warm, but perfect. Twenty thousand total. And it's eight point seven feed rate. I'm trying to keep it cut next time.
Nice finish. Yeah, twenty six and a half and twenty seven, so a little over. I'll, I'll do a little polish on it anyway, so it'll be fine. Hey, right, we'll get her re-rigged and turned around. I gotta cut this down to the max diameter it's gonna be. It's gonna be 1.227 is what I'm gonna shoot for. Okay, I'm set up here at 60 degrees for the to cut the dovetail shape there, obviously the 60 degree angles. So Okay, so I got the 60 degree cut. Well, I did some measuring, and this bolt wasn't quite like the last one. It's a little bit different in the tolerance on their 12 point. So uh, I did some measuring. So I'm a little less on the diameter here. I'm at 1.200. And I hope to be able to squeeze this insert in there and because it sticks out 30,000 so I think I'm going to still be able to make this one work for this bolt even. So I'm going to face this, the rest of this off, this 12 point off, right up to the end of our um, 60 degree angle here. So we're going to see if we can make this bolt work. I, th I think we'll be able to just squeeze it in and it will be... The tip of the insert will be extremely close to the center though, but we'll see how so it's off the center just a tiny bit. So we'll face this down.
Okay, we got the 60 degree cut faced off. Like I said, we had to change our diameter a little bit. And uh, we ended up at, let's see here. Ninety-seven, one uh, one point one nine seven. So we'll see if we can make that work, and then we'll be off the mill. I'll do a little bit of polish and we'll be off to the mill. Okay, here's the bumper. It's all uh, tacked together. Some finish welding has been done, but all tacked together. All the back welding is done. I just want to do all the all the front well all the outside front welding will all be tigged. So it'll be going over buddy's place who's got a really nice tig welder and then we'll do the tigging. Get the trailer hitch receiver part in. All of that. So it's looking good. The truck looks funny without a bumper. There's Roscoe, the shop dog. Smile, Roscoe. Here. Oh. He's kind of lazy. There he goes. Okay. Then we'll be getting it painted. Okay. That's it. Thanks, guys.